This will be a tutorial on the Newth Morris Pratt pattern matching algorithm. So we're going to compare a pattern string P to a text string T and see if P can be found inside T. So this is like when you're in a PDF or uh, in your browser and you hit uh, Control F or Command F for find and you type in a couple words and you want to find them somewhere in the document. That's what we're doing here. We're doing this in an efficient, uh, fast way. The first thing that we're going to do with this Newth Morris Pratt algorithm is we're going to pre-process the pattern. And we're going to do that by computing something called the failure function. We're going to see what that is in a minute. So next we're going to compare the pattern to the text. When we find a match, we're just going to increment the current indices, iterating over both the pattern and the text. When there's a mismatch, that's when we're going to look at the failure function to find the new index in the pattern where we'll continue checking against the mismatched character in the text. So we're going to get into images and code right after this. So the failure function, uh, we're looking for prefixes of the pattern within the pattern itself. That's what the failure function is looking for. It's going to assign each character in the pattern with an integer value. We're going to have an integer assigned to each character. So this integer i means that the current character is the ith character in a prefix of the pattern. So here's a, an example of the uh, failure function uh, visually. So our pattern is A, B, A, B, X. So for whatever reason, we're looking for A, B, A, B, X inside of our text T, which is just somewhere else. We don't know what it is yet. So this is the failure function. We're pre-processing this pattern. So the first one's always A, and then we look at B. Is this a prefix? No, because it starts with A. Is this a prefix? Yes. How far along did we get? 1. And then now we're at B. Oh, look, this is 2 because it's AB. And that is a AB is a prefix, and it's two characters long. Right? And then X, uh, we ruined it. If this was another A, it might have been 3 because ABA. So it would have been 3. But no, it's X. It's not a prefix. It ruins it. So we're or at zero now. Um, that's the failure function. Here is the actual code. We'll go over this. We're going to look at an image uh, walkthrough that'll be a lot easier to follow than this code, but I thought it would be good to look at the code first. So <laughs> we're going to accept a text string and a pattern string, and we're going to initialize i at zero and j at zero, and then while this is our while loop, while i is less than n. So if the pattern at j equals the text at i, we have a character match. That's this if. This else if is no character match, but we've advanced in p. So we had found matches before, but now we've sort of messed up. And this is no match at all and have not advanced in p. So if we have a character match, if we're at the last character of the pattern, Bingo, a complete match. If it's not the last character, we're going to increment i and j. So we're going to look at the next character of the pattern and the next character of the text. Else, if we got a no match, darn, no match, but we had made progress previously. So we it was like a, b, like what we had before, a, b, a. So if our text was a, b, z, darn, that didn't work, but we had made some progress with that initial a, b then um, we're going to set our uh, reset our j and then uh, if we have no match and we have not advanced in p then we're just going to skip ahead one and then if by the end of this we concluded that the pattern uh, is not a substring of the text then we're just going to turn, return negative 1 because this returns an integer. Here's a visual walkthrough. It's actually super easy to understand like with this visual walkthrough. Uh, obviously, this is our long text, and this is our pattern. So we look at A, and that matches with A. B matches with B. A, nope, doesn't match with T. So what do we do? We look at the last one that did match, 
Remember, the last one that did match, so that's the B. So it's the second B in the pattern. So we already computed our failure function. What number did we assign to it? Zero. So that means that we're going to take this pattern at index zero and align it with this mismatched character. That's the whole thing. We're going to finish this, but that's it. There's no more, nothing more complicated than that. Um, that's the hardest part. So what this is doing is the brute force method which you can find on this channel, the brute force method for pattern matching. It's gonna, it's gonna look at, uh, it's gonna look at this, and then it's gonna move ahead one. Look at this, then move ahead one, and it has a really bad uh, efficiency, especially like in the worst case. So this is allowing us to skip many comparisons. So that's watch the brute force method, and we'll talk about. Uh, how inefficient it is. So anyways, this was zero, so that means we're going to take the, the uh, zero index uh, character of the pattern and move it up here. So now we got it up here. So this didn't match at all. So remember, if you look back at our code, you'll see that if it's a mismatch and we have not moved ahead in P at all, then we're just going to go ahead by one. Now we got a bunch, we've moved ahead a ton, but uh, we have a mismatch right at the end. Okay, let's look at this B, it's the second last character here, and uh, it's 2. That's what our failure function computed. So we're going to go 0, 1, 2, so we're going to align this A with this mismatch character in the text. Here we go, A, B, oh, we messed up here. Um, so we look here, the failure function computed is 0, so we're going to align 0 with this. First thing is a mismatch, so we'll just move it forward by 1. And then uh, match, 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 match. That's This is uh, at index m minus 1. So that means that we've seen the whole. It's a match, and that's the last character in our pattern. So bingo, uh, we found a full match. So let's talk about the running time. It's pretty simple, especially if you go back and look at the code. Um, so we're going to let the text T have N characters and the pattern P have M characters. Um, so calculating the failure function is going to take uh, order M time. I didn't give code for the failure function, but it's pretty easy. We're just looking for prefixes as we go along in the pattern itself. Uh, I'll leave that as a project for you, and I'll tell you that it requires uh, OM time, where M is the number of characters. Um, the while loop in the main Newth-Morris Pratt function, that's our main function is doing the matching and the comparing, that'll execute in order N time. And you can see, if you go back in the code, that'll be clear. Um, so these are two separate functions, we calculated them separately. Therefore, the total running time is order n plus m. That's really good. It's uh, way better than brute force, and uh, this is a way better worst case. This worst case is actually optimal because we're just iterating through the whole pattern and the whole text once. Can't get any better than that. That's the best you can do, and that's the worst case. So no matter what you do, that's the best. Um, the Boyer-Moore was a little bit better than brute force, and brute force was pretty slow, but there you go. Those are our three pattern matching uh, algorithms, this the last one being Newth-Morris-Pratt.